Our gracious Father in heaven, as we consider the things of thy word, especially in the uh, chapter in the chapters in the book of Jeremiah, chapters uh, 27, 28, and 35 and 36, we ask, dear Father, that your Holy Spirit would be our teacher and that you would open our eyes that we may behold wondrous things out of thy law. We pray that you would anoint our eyes with eye salve, that we may see clearly. And Father, we pray that as we consider these things, that you would help us not only to be hearers, but doers of thy word. And that the entrance of thy words may give light to our souls. We pray and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning to everyone. We are now at part number five in this series, Approaching Doom. And I want to recap some of the things that we mentioned uh, about two weeks ago, two weeks, maybe a week and a half ago. Some of you were not here at the time. Uh, you were here a couple of Sabbaths ago, but uh, some of the later presentations uh, that were done on this uh, you may not have seen them on the internet, so I'm going to, I'm going to recap some of the things here. Um, you see on the board the chapter in volume four of the testimonies, which starts on page 164. The chapter is uh, uh, Jeremiah reproves Israel. You see at the top over here. And uh, that chapter is divided into three sections, section one, section two, section three. Section one is, again, Jeremiah reproves Israel. That's the, the entire name of the, 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 the entire name. But then section two is a lesson from the Rechabites. Section three, the warnings of God rejected. Um, the first section deals with Jeremiah 20, uh, 27 and 28. The second section deals with Jeremiah 35, and the, sec the third section deals with Jeremiah 36. And uh, the first section, Jeremiah reproves Israel, is about the yoke. We either receive the sealing message, which is the first yoke. Actually, both of them, but primarily the first one, is the sealing message. So we either wear, wear Christ's yoke, that sealing message, are we wear man's yoke. And of course, the, uh, the first yoke is made of what? Made of wood. And the man's yoke is made of iron. And... Uh, What does iron represent? Rome. The iron kingdom, according to Deuteronomy 28, I think it is. And uh, the second section, a lesson from, from the Rechabites, is a visual test. The Rechabites, Jeremiah, the Lord told Jeremiah, go to the Rechabites and say, drink some wine. And they said, no. Our father said, you never drink wine. And this was in the, which generation was that? Fourth generation. Fourth generation. And then the, uh, the third one, which this is the one that we're going con to continue today. Where we left off, I said the warnings, that's not right. It's the warnings. Let me write that down correctly. I skipped the N. The warnings of God rejected is the third section. Jeremiah 36, 
and uh, it deals with a first roll and another roll. I've called it a second roll. It is, but actually the scriptures call it another roll. I'm being technical there. Uh, and you see, one of the things that you see in there, it's very clear to see. What would that be? When you have two rolls, a doubling. So you have a doubling. Um, a lot of places we can go here. Um, one of the things that's uh, of interest to me in that uh, second section, or rather the third section, I should say, it is entitled, uh, The Warnings of God Rejected. Now, there is a chapter in the Great Controversy by almost the exact name. If you have your Great Controversy, you can look at that just briefly. We won't probably address it a whole lot. Um, Yes, chapter 21 of Great Controversy is a warning rejected. The page number is uh, page uh, 375. Now, one thing, and this is, when we consider just the plain, like the first, second, and third angel's message, God gives the first angel, his, the first angel's message, and then when that is rejected, then you have the second angel's message, which is, you know, a pronouncement, you know, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, because why? Because she rejected the first message. So, there's a lot there that, that could be dealt with in, in regards to that matter, and we may read later a, a little bit of this, this chapter, because I think it's very applicable to this uh, chapter in, in uh, Volume 4 of the Testimonies. Now, before I forget here, you know, when uh, I was studying this chapter in Volume 4, I thought, okay, the order in which they are in was not by accident. You have the Jeremiah reproves Israel, a lesson from the Rechabites, the warnings of God rejected. As I've seen this time and time again. I'm sure you have too. When you look at the spirit of prophecy, and even in the Bible, things are put in their order, numbers are put in their order purposefully by the Holy Spirit. And so, in Jeremiah, uh, in the first chapter, Jeremiah reproves Israel, the first section, I should say, Jeremiah reproves Israel. It deals with Jeremiah 27 and 28. Jeremiah chapters 27 and 28, primarily, even though there are some other peripheral chapters, I, I might call them that, that she deals with, primarily it is Jeremiah 27 and 28, first chapter, first section, and then in the second one, the, about the Rechabites, that's Jeremiah, all of, it's all of Jeremiah 35. And in uh, the warnings of God rejected primarily deals with Jeremiah uh, 36. Even though she mentions Jeremiah thir uh, 37 a little bit, okay? But this is primarily what she deals with, 27, 28, 35, and 36. And so, you do the math. Those of you that were here, don't say anything. Please. What's that, what's that come to? You can't say. You can't say. <laughs> Someone say it. The ones that were here if, are, are the ones that weren't here, whatever. whatever. 126. 126. Ah. The 126, so what?
but you'll find in uh, primarily in the first section, even though you can see bits of it in, in the first and in the second and third, brother, but primarily in that first section, one of the things that Sister, that Sister White is addressing, the Bible addresses, is the 70 years captivity. Right? The 70 years captivity. And what is 70? How is, the 12, how is 70 to 1260? Captivities the captivities in Babylon. You go to page, uh, Prophets and Kings, page 714. Cle Sister White clearly uh, uh, parallels, that might not be a good enough word, but parallels uh, the 1260 years of, uh, of, of, of uh, the captivity of God's people under papal rule with the 70 years captivity of ancient Israel. Okay, so you have the 1260 there, and so 126 is the same thing as the 1260, which is the same thing as the 70 years, and of course the 70 years, the 1260, and the 126 is the same thing as the 2520. So no accident there. No accident there. Um, so, I'll probably forget something, but right now I'm going to go on. Um, oh, yes. I want to go back to one point here, and I, I pretty much I'm, I'm showing you this here. At the first section, you have, uh, I'm saying this is the ceiling message. How can we show in a plain, thus saith the Lord, that this message that Jeremiah is giving Israel is the sealing message versus the other false message, which is a, a counterfeit sealing message? Let me give you a thus saith the Lord. Yes, here it is. You don't have this in your notes. This is from volume 19 of the manuscript releases, be 19 MR, pages 165 to 166. But he who came to our world to seek and to save that which was lost has pledged his own life that men might have a second probation. He has pity and compassion and love that are without a parallel. And he has made every provision in behalf of men that none need perish. The divine Son of God came to, into our world, its light and life, to encompass the whole world and to attract and unite to himself every human being who is under Satan's discipline and rule. He invites them, Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. Thus, he unites with himself by a new inspiration of grace all who will come unto him. And this last part is the most important to me. He's already mentioned the yoke of Christ. And then she says, he puts upon, him, upon them his seal, his sign of obedience and loyalty to his holy Sabbath. So she combines Christ's yoke, Christ's seal, Christ's sign of loyalty, of obedience, and uh, Christ's sign of obedience and loyalty to his Holy Sabbath. All of those are all combined. So spiritually speaking, spiritual things are spiritually discerned. When Jeremiah was telling Israel, ancient Israel, don't rebel against the king of Babylon. And, she was t and he, he was telling ancient Israel, 
Babylon is going to come. The king of the north is going to come. Nebuchadnezzar is going to come. This is the same thing as what we're saying, have been saying for decades, but especially now, that the king of the north, Daniel 1141, is going to come into the glorious land and over, overcome it. All right? And this message, I, I know this is very fundamental, but I, I want to just emphasize it. This message to Israel, to modern Israel, is, it's not only to Israel. It's not only, whether, you, whether you're speaking about ancient Israel or modern Israel, it's is speaking also to all the nations. When you go to, we'll, we'll go later on, maybe not today, but we'll go later on to Jeremiah 25. In Jeremiah 25, it's, it's all the nations, all the nations. And that in itself is a, is a study just, just by itself. So um, let me make sure I've covered all my, all what I wanted to bring out on there. I wanted to recap on that, go back to that. Yes, sir. You're saying that this takes place in the fourth generation based upon Jeremiah 35, and it's in Testimonies, Volume 4, which would be a second witness to the fourth generation. Mm-hmm. And it's coming, this truth is opening up now, and we're living in a period of midnight, and Testimonies, Volume 4, page 164 to 185, is 21 pages, and 21 is a symbol of midnight. Amen. Okay, see, I, I, knew, I, lo I calculated that, and I thought, I, I, I would have counted 21 or 22, but yeah. You can do it inclusive or exclusive. Okay. How, how, explain just briefly how 21 is a symbol of midnight. Page 60, 164 to 185, subtract them. Yeah, tw 21 pages. 21, July 21st was midnight. Do I, oh, Austin yes, Tabernacle. thank you, thank you, thank you, thank Midway you. Midway between when they first thought. The yes, day. July 21st. Thank you. I knew there was something to that. Yeah, midnight. Thank you. Volume 4 of the Testimonies. Not, yes, not volume four of the testimony. Midnight. What's that? It's not midnight, midnight. cry, it's midnight. Midnight, thank you. Midnight. Or midway. I'm glad I put the pages there so that someone would be prompted to catch that because like I said, I had I looked at that, I calculated the pages, and uh, I don't, I, that, that did not dawn on me. Okay, great. Praise the Lord. All right. I think that's it. Okay, let's go to the warnings of God rejected, and you should have that on your notes. Uh, we're not, we're not going to go to the beginning of the notes because we've already, we've already covered the story about the Rechabites. We're going to go to the second, or rather, it's the third section in this, but it's the second section on your notes. The warnings of God rejected. Um, before we get into the body of the notes, I'm going to read a portion of an article that's related here. She's dealing with this. This is, this is about the two roles. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to an article in the Spirit of Prophecy that partially she deals with the two roles, with, 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 with that history, Jeremiah uh, 36. But this is a part of a larger article from um, PC, I'm, I'll give you the, the reference, it's going to be PC. 80.3, it's the Paulson Collection, all right, and, and, and the name of the article is Lessons from the Visions of Ezekiel Part 2, and I haven't even read Part 1, Warning Against Rebellion. So you, you have, and I'm just now, here you have, in Volume 4, you have the Warnings of God Rejected, and this one here is called the Warning uh, uh, warning against rebellion, so that you have them related that way. So, uh, like I said, this is a very, very long article. I'm not going to read 
the entire thing. I'm going to bring out some things here that uh, now she's dealing here with Ezekiel's visions. So she says here, at any moment, God can withdraw from the penitent the tokens of his wonderful mercy and love. And you, you, can, you can tell, as you, as you read this article, you can tell that the, the context, the timing here is during the giving of the message there in, in 1888. And those who rejected it, okay. And even, you know, actually, it's even, I think, beyond that. I think maybe this goes into the area there in the early 1900s and over the, the Kellogg uh, um, heresy, all right? So she, so she this is uh, uh, PC 64.7, or actually 65.1, 65.1, all right? At any moment, God can withdraw from the impenitent the tokens of his wonderful mercy and love. Oh, that human agencies might consider what will be the sure result of their ingratitude to him and of their disregard of the infinite gift of Christ to our world. If they continue to love transgression more than obedience, the, pres the present blessings of God and the great mercy of God that they now enjoy but do not appreciate will finally become the occasion of their eternal ruin. When it is too late for them to see and understand that which they have slighted as a thing of naught, they will know what it means to be without God, without hope. Then they will realize what they have lost by choosing to be disloyal to God and to stand in rebellion to his commandments. Uh, dropping down further, way down further. Um, Okay, this is going to be PC 66.4. And as you read this, think about the present rebellion. Those who are rebelling against the plain words of God, people who were once part of this message. If the Holy Spirit is rejected, all my words will not help to remove even for the time being the false representations that have been made. And Satan stands ready to invent more. <coughs> Notice she, she is almost repeating these things. Oh, she's re she is repeating them, these thoughts over and over and over again. Notice the next one. If the evidence already given is rejected, all other evidence will be useless until there is seen the converting power of God upon minds. <clears throat> Another one, continuing. If the convincing impressions of the Holy Spirit made in the past will not be accepted as trustworthy evidence, nothing that can be presented hereafter will reach them because of the bewitching guile of Satan, because the, the bewitching guile of Satan has perverted their dis discernment. Now, <clears throat> let me try to explain something here, and I don't mean to make it complicated, but I have seen things like this in the spirit of prophecy. If you watch for them, you will see them. She makes similar statements in other passages that say something to the effect that once we reject the plain, thus saith the Lord, plain scripture, unless we repent of that and open our eyes, we can't, we can't go any further if we do that. We cannot go any further. God, in other words, God will not reveal any more light to us. We have, we have just stopped. And until we repent, at that point, we are lost. We are lost. There is no hope for us unless we repent and go back. Because in another place, I think maybe the next statement, 
I know there's somewhere in this where she says, maybe further down in, in this article, that basically she says that if we need to, these people need to just stop right now and turn right around. If you don't turn around, you're going you're gonna to fall off the cliff. All right. Continuing on. To those who have been convinced again and again, as the Holy Spirit has borne witness, all the words that can now be said cannot be as forcible as the impression made by the Holy Spirit of God. Continuing on. Notice, this is the next paragraph about the middle part of the paragraph. The message must in no case be changed from what it has been. Amen. As has been foretold in the scriptures, there will be seducing spirits and doctrines of devils in the midst of the church, and these evil influences will increase, but hold fast the beginning of your confidence firm unto the end. Page that? That's page 66.6. Uh, .6. Yeah. Thank you. 666. All right. Um, okay, 67.3. Thus I was speaking before a perplexed company just before I called them to take their stand on the right side. If some choose another position, let them alone. Labor for those who have never had the evidence of truth. So long as men hold fast to men and believe men in the place of the word of God, you can do little to help them. You are working against principalities and powers as is represented in Ephesians 6.12. When, when, when someone tells me, well, well, you, you need to listen to the so and so, and I'm taking their word. I don't. I'm not. I'm going to. I'm going to ignore what you're saying. Uh, what, what you're giving me from the plain scripture. Uh, let me just tell you a little story. Uh, very, 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 very quick. Just last, just a, a few days ago. There was a fellow that came, uh, I was out there uh, blowing leaves. And I, I saw this guy walking on the road out over there, bearded guy, 76 I think he said he, he, he was. And uh, he stopped and he was watching me and I, of course I had the, the blower going and couldn't, we couldn't talk anyway and I wasn't gonna turn the motor off. So I just waved at him, you know, and he, he didn't, respond very much and he just I went back to work and he just kept on walking he walked all the way down you know somewhere way down there and I thought to myself because I was almost done where I was at and I was gonna have to walk across the lawn there and uh, I thought he might he may want to talk to me so sure enough when I was done I walked to uh, over there across that little ditch and uh, he come the my the blower was off, so he come walking down the lawn towards me, and uh, all he wanted to do was argue, and he wanted to know what we were doing here. Uh, evidently, he'd been observing this place, and he wanted to know things. You know, it, he was raised an Adventist. So somehow, he had become bitter and rejects the Bible. Uh, it became, I tried, you know, he was asking questions, so I started to try to answer the questions, and it was, he doesn't believe the book of Revelation, doesn't believe the Bible, is, the Jews, the Israelites, the, the Egyptians never had slaves, he just was, he was vehement on that. And uh, I just, I, I, I wanted to get out of that conversation. Uh, I was going to ask you about that. I thought so. I'm not surprised. So when I saw I was getting nowhere, I, you know, when he was asking all of these questions here about what was going on, I said, sir, I don't want to argue with you, and these questions you're asking me, uh, they're none of your business. I saw he was just, that's all he wanted to do was, was just attack, 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 attack. And I just walked, I finally just, okay, I walked away from him.
I turned my back on him and just walked away. So if you're going to ask me questions about, you know, because you was asking, you know, you're teaching the, you know, Bible here, you know, and gardening. I don't see any gardening here. You, you, there's no school here. But then you reject the Bible. The plain scripture, there's, what else can I, I, I said, well, I guess we can't talk anymore. You know, end of discussion. So that's the way I deal with people. It, once, we, once, they, once they make it clear that they're rejecting truth, for whatever reason, you know, if, if they show some willingness to, you know, reason with you, you know, okay, then I'm going to reason with them. Come now, let us reason together. But if they make it very clear and very vehemently as, as he did, you know, and there's other people like that. So anyway, going on, and I went back to the beginning of the article. Way to the beginning. I didn't want to do that. Um, all right, so. You ended at 67.3, I believe. All right, thank you. 67.3. Give me a moment here and I will get back on course. Yeah, notice uh, the very end of, this is a 67.10. This is the end of that first section of that article. 67.10. God now calls for the, all who choose to serve him to stand firmly on the platform of, of eternal truth. Let those who have brought about the present state of confusion by making the division that exists stop to consider seriously before going any fur farther. That's the, one, that's the one I was talking about. Choose you this day whom you will serve. If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. That puts this right smack into the midnight cry. Because that's where we are at right now. That is no accident. She puts that at the very end of that section. The message to be born to the people now is choose you this day whom you will serve. If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, the principles of the world, the philosophical, educational things of the world, go ahead, follow them. 67.10 PC. All right. Continuing, continuing on in this article. This isn't really an article, this is a book. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, several articles. Yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Yeah, it is several articles. All right. I think one more part of this. This is going to be 70... 77.6. Time is passing into eternity. Many who ought to have been, many who ought to have keen perceptions are blinded by false theories and false influences. They are unready to meet the last great conflict, and they do not realize they, that they are un, that they're, uh, they do not realize their unprepared condition. My prayer for them is, O thou searcher of, heart, of hearts, let thy word, which is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, pierce to, to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and discern the thoughts and intents of the heart. Bring these souls, who are in so great peril because of their lack of discernment, to realize that they must cope with satanic powers." Many are closing their hearts against the Holy Spirit of God. Many who once understood the workings of the Spirit of God, Christ does not own today. In other words, Christ does not own them as his children or his followers. Oh, that Christ would stir the hearts of those who have once walked in the light, but who now walk in darkness, who have once known what it meant to have the grace of God in their hearts, but who are now destitute of that grace. They have not the light of the Spirit of God, but in their blindness they have quenched that light, and they are now under the condemnation of God. Who have a realization 
of the condition of the unbelieving world who are preparing their hearts to receive the impressions of the Spirit of God. Those who receive the light and walk in the light will have increased light. That is as fundamental of a principle of God's word, a law of God's word, as the, that the sun will go down this evening and come up tomorrow morning, or even more sure than that. The only way we can receive greater light is by, by walking in that light. Walking in the light means you accept it. It has become a part of your life. Unless we do that, God will not give us more light. Amen. And I think, and I emphasize that the way I do because I, I have discerned that many people in the church, in the Adventist church, don't realize that. Anyway, let's go to volume four of the testimonies, your notes there. Page 176, the warnings of God rejected. Jeremiah was already deprived of his liberty because he would obey God and give to the king and others occupying responsible positions in Israel the words of warning which he had received from the mouth of God. The Israelites would not accept these reproofs nor allow their course to be questioned. They have manifested great anger and contempt. They had manifested great anger and contempt at the words of rebuke and at the judgments which were predicted to come upon them if they continued in rebellion against the Lord. Although Israel would not hear the word of divine counsel, it did not make that word of none effect. Neither did God cease to reprove and to threaten with his displeasure and his judgments those who refused to obey his requirements. Just because some that have been a part of this movement say there isn't going to be a Sunday law in our history, does it make it so? Does it make it so? The Lord directed Jeremiah saying, and this is part of our scripture reading, take thee a roll of a book and write therein all the words which I have spoken unto thee against Israel and against Judah, and against all the nations, from the day I spake unto thee, from the days of Josiah, even unto this day. It may be that the house of Judah will hear all the evil which I purpose to do unto them, that they may return every man from his evil way, that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. All right. Several points to go over this. Now, um... Let's take this paragraph part by part. It says, take the roll. What other place in the Bible is a roll mentioned that we are very familiar with? Ezekiel 2. Starting at Ezekiel 2, verse 9. Let's start at verse... Seven. I started verse six. And thou, son of man, be not afraid of them, neither be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns be with thee, and thou dost dwell among scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. And thou shalt speak my words unto them, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. We are to speak whether people will hear or whether they will forbear for they are most rebellious. But thou, son of man, hear what I say unto thee, be not thou rebellious like that rebellious house, open thy mouth and eat that I give thee. What's he going to eat? And when I looked, behold, a hand was sent unto me therein. And he spread it before me, and it was written within and without, and there was written therein lamentations and mourning and woe. Is there another place in scripture where it speaks of a volume, because volume is actually the original meaning of the word roll, 
in which something was written within and without. Revelation 5, verses 1 through 9. And I saw in the right hand of him that sat on the throne a book written within and on the backside sealed with seven seals. So you see where there a book written within and on the backside. And Ezekiel says it is written within and without. Pretty much the same thing, would you not say? And I saw a strong angel proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the book and to loose the seals thereof? And no man in heaven nor in earth, neither under the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. Reminds me of a statement in one of the spiritual gifts volumes. I think it's volume one, but I'm not sure. Where she says that the Lord, something to the effect that the Lord does not reveal things until he's ready to reveal them. They're not exact words, but that's what, she's, that's what, it, that's what she says. So no man is able to open the book. Only the Lord is open, able to open the book. Jesus, to be exact. And I wept much because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look therein. Now remember, let's keep in mind as we're, as we're looking at this, we, we won't go very far into this, but this book is the same thing as the role that Ezekiel writes about, and it's the same role that Jeremiah is talking about. The same role, written within and without. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not, behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath prevailed to open the book and to loose the seven seals thereof. And behold, and I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the four beasts and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as it had been slain, Jesus Christ, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the earth. And he came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts and four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps and golden vials full of odors, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, Jeremiah's roll, and to open the seals thereof. And that's right there, even right there, it's saying, that that role is the sealing message. It contains the sealing message. To open the seals of that role, for thou, hast, for thou wast slain and hast redeemed us to God by thy blood out of every kindred and tongue and people and nation. Same role, same book, same volume. And then um, notice... Go back to your notes there, volume four of the testimonies. Notice that paragraph says that this book was written to Israel and against Judah, the northern and southern kingdoms, and all the nations from the day that I, from the, from the day I spake unto thee. All right. It says to all the nations. Now, at a very, 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 very basic level, what should that remind us of? regarding the three angels' messages. Who are they given to? All the, All the nations. Revelation 14, 6. And I saw another angel flying in, flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to all the nations. All right? So that puts this first role, at least, <coughs> in, one way, in one way of speaking, as the first angel's message, in a way. But it doesn't deny the fact that you have, <clears throat> you have another role and you have the two that are combined and they're doubling, all right? Um, oh, so it goes on and says, to all the nations, from what? From the day I spake unto thee, from, jo from the days of Josiah even unto this day. So where can we find in the scriptures when God began to speak to Jeremiah? That should be an easy one, right? Jeremiah chapter 1.
and you'll find there it is. Starting in verse one, we'll read verse one and two. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah, of the priests that were in Anathoth, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came, where, when? In the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the 13th year of his reign. So, and I haven't gone very far in, into restudying all of these, but really, when you, get, when you, when you consider that verse that Sister White quotes in volume four of the testimonies, and she's quoting there Jeremiah uh, 36, verse two, where he says, take the roll of a book and write therein all the words that I, spo that I spoke, have spoken unto you, and write therein all the words that I've spoken to you against Israel and against Judah and against all the nations. You, by ju justly, you would have to go all the way back to the beginning of Josiah, of, of Jeremiah, all the way back to the beginning of the book of Jeremiah and study all that God had spoken unto them from chapter 1, and it says, even unto this day, whatever that day is. All right? So, you, are, you have it also in, yes, Jeremiah 25. Let's go to Jeremiah 25. We'll, we'll, we'll read verses 1 through 3. The word that came to Jeremiah concerning all the people of Judah in the fourth year of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, that was the first year of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, the which Jeremiah the prophet spake unto all the people of Judah and to all the inhabitants of Jerusalem, saying, From the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, repeating, if I remember correctly, all the words of Jeremiah 1, verse 2. From the thirteenth year of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, even unto this day, that is, the three and twentieth year, the word of the Lord hath come unto me, and I have spoken unto you, rising early and speaking, that ye have not, but ye have not hearkened. Okay, so I, want, I wanted to put that in the record there. Um, and he says, it may be that the house of Judah will hear all the evil which I purpose to do unto them, that they may return every man from his evil way, that I may forgive their iniquity and their sin. All right. Next paragraph. Here is shown the Lord's reluctance to give up his sinning people. Here is shown the Lord's reluctance to give up his sinning people. And lest Israel had so far neglected his reproofs and warnings as to let them pass from their memory, he delays his judgments upon them and gives them a full rehearsal of their disobedience and aggravating sins from the days of Josiah down to their own time and of the judgments he had pronounced in consequence of their transgressions. Thus he had... Thus they had another opportunity to see their iniquity and to repent. Okay, let's stop right there. And I, I meant to mention this earlier, and I forgot to. So it says, from the days of Josiah. Josiah. And what does Josiah mean? Foundation of God. So we could put that at what in, in our time. I mean, I mean, you have the foundation of God. I mean, you could put it at various points, but in our time, where, we, where would we put that? I would put it in 1996 because this Omega movement, that's where they really fight, is 1996 when the message was formalized. Okay. Amen. So what in essence is the Lord saying when he says, take the roll 
of a book and write therein all the words that I have spoken on, against thee and against Israel and against Judah and against all the nations from the day that I spake unto thee, from the days of Josiah even unto this day. What is he, if you could put it in, in our day, what, 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 would, what would he be saying? That he's endorsing the Time of the End magazine. Okay, okay. <laughs> all right. And that's what they're rejecting. Okay. And it needs to be repeated. Yes. Daniel 11 needs to be repeated. So, all the message is repeated. That's pl I think that's very, very simple. Now, what would this day be? I haven't come to a conclusion on that one yet. Any takers? He's, he's living in the time of Zedekiah right there, isn't he? Uh, Zedekiah and also... Uh, Jehoiachin's uh, already in captivity. Yeah, Jeho Jehoiakim. Jehoiakim is in... He's the one that burns the robe. Okay, so Jehoiakim. You know, mm, you know this. Uh, at least one way of looking at it would be maybe until the day of the Lord. Okay. And you could say that July 18th this year is the day of the Lord. We can not, not just that day, but it's, it's progressive. From that day forth begins the day of the Lord. And when you consider uh, Mount Carmel, we're at Mount Carmel right now. We're at Mount Carmel. And the fire is about to come down, even this day, July 18, 2020. So, anyway, something to think about, unless we have some other thoughts on that. Um, so, it, this is the thing, and I, I want to just emphasize this, even though we're pretty much already saying it, but just in agreement with all the message being repeated. All the messages being repeated. She actually, if you notice there in the text there in volume four, she says a full rehearsal, not only of the messages, but of their disobedience and aggravating sins. So it's a rehearsal. Now, another matter that comes up here in that paragraph, she says, thus they had another opportunity to see their iniquity and repent. Another opportunity. Now, don't, I, I just, I'm, I want to forewarn you in case you would get this mixed up. When she says another opportunity, that is not the same thing as the second role or another role, okay? That's two different things, okay? The, the second opportunity in our time begins at 9-11. I don't, I don't want to, it would take a whole nother study to, to even go into all that, but I base, and I have based my understanding of that for years on the parable of the... Uh, the unfruitful fig tree. Let's just go to it there and just look at it very quickly. There in uh, Luke 13, yeah, Luke 13, 6 through 9. And he spake also this parable, 
A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon, and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard, Behold, these three years, how many years? Three, three years, I come seeking fruit on this fig tree, and find none. Cut it down. Why cumbereth it the ground? It's just taking up space. And he answered, and he answering said unto him, this is, he's answering the, the person who had the vineyard, okay? He has a person that's the dresser. You have the dresser and the, and the certain man. So the dresser says to the certain man that owned the vineyard, and he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also, till I shall dig about it and dung it, and if it bear fruit, well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. And when you take this, this parable and you study it with the parable in Christ's object lessons, the chapter entitled, Spare It This Year Also, and you can see and study this with our message that the Seventh day Adventist Church was given another opportunity at 9-11. Because what happens at 9-11, among other things? Return to the old paths. Return to the old paths, but the, the latter rain begins to be sprinkled. So the latter rain being sprinkled and you have this increase of light. There's, I mean, more blessings poured upon his church, giving them another opportunity, one more year, as it were, spiritually speaking, yes. Line up Luke 13 being at a rebellion and then the six and the ninth hour. So you could lay all those hours, the four hours, which are also the years, with the, the actual verses. Yes. Oh. Do I need to repeat that? Okay. The 13, Luke 13, number 13 representing rebellion, and then you have the six and the nine, the six through nine. And are, did you relate them to the uh, six and the ninth hours yes. yeah. of Christ's crucifixion? But also there's four in there, the four years to so each of those verses. There's four, yes, there's four years in there, yes. Yes. And just so we'll, we'll know here, the three, the three years would be here as far as in that, this line, the three years. When you get to 9-11, then begins the fourth year. All right. All right. But yes, I, I would highly recommend if you are so moved. And I, I presented this in a sermon some quite a few years ago. And it's tempting because it was it was so interesting. It's tempting to go back even and redo it uh, now. But it's very, very interesting to to study that parable with Christ object lessons in that chapter of spirit this year also. Anyway, going on. So. Next paragraph. The prophet Jeremiah in, in obedience to the command. I got an hour, no, a minute and 15, 13 seconds left. You know what? Before I start that one. Let's just stop it right there. And uh, we'll have to continue this another day. Sorry for the abrupt end, but I don't want to go too long. If I go, if I start another paragraph, it's, I'm not going to be able to stop. So we will be here all day. So um, let's pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank you for the extra time that you've given us. We thank you, dear Father, that you have given us these messages, these sealing messages, so that we may be awakened to realize our responsibility and our duty to give these messages and to allow these messages to have their way in our lives. And so we pray, Lord, for grace and strength to fight the good fight of faith. We pray, dear Father, that you would help us to bruise Satan's head under our feet so that we may be, be victorious and come off more than, more than conquerors through Christ's name. Please help us to continue to grow in grace 
and in the knowledge of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ. We pray and we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.